you feel energized and passionate because you're valued, because you're standing for your value, and because you're realizing that having these conversations isn't as hard as you think. Hello, Architect Nation. Welcome back to the show. Today is part two of the episode that we talked about last time, which is give me my fucking money. And as an architect, you may not have said this out loud, but you've probably thought it at one time or another. Have you ever had trouble finding an architectural photographer who could really make your project shine? Today's episode is sponsored by renowned architectural photographer Tobin Davies. Tobin Davies eliminates the hassle by traveling to your location to create the stunning photographs your project deserves, and we are happy to support him here on the Business of Architecture podcast. Visit TobinDavies.com or BayawayPhotos.com to book a shoot in less than 10 minutes and ask about the special offer for Business of Architecture podcast listeners. Again, that's TobinDavies.com or BayawayPhotos.com. And it's time to announce this month's 200 Club. If you missed our episode on the 200 Club, listen to BOA episode 485 to learn more about this new initiative to benchmarking small firm performance. The 200 Club is a metric of your net operating revenue per annum per full-time equivalent employee. Those who enter into the 200 Club are those who are producing $200,000 per annum per full-time equivalent employee. So it's a really good and a, a, a tough metric, but plenty of practices who are able and who are actually doing this and beyond. I must say that we might have to introduce a 300 club very shortly because we've got a number of, of our clients who are up there. So this month, Everybody who is in the 200 Club is performing at $200,000 per full-time equivalent employee per annum or more. And a big congratulations to Mark Elster of AOME, Drew and Justin Tindall, Chris Brandon, Irene Adams, Christopher Rawlings, uh, Lena Boella, Sven Levine, Thomas Norton, Charles Scram, Ryan Solars, Yost Bende, Kimberly Dokes, Molly Willlock, Ian and Tony Wilson, Judy and Larry Apple, and Gilbert Atik. So congratulations, everybody. Keep up the good work and look forward to seeing you all shortly. So today we're going to be talking about this idea of collections. What happens when you don't get paid? What are some of the solutions? What are the impacts when your clients pay you late or when they don't pay you? What does that say about the way they respect your work, how they value as an architect? Is it just something that we need to accept just because it's just the way the industry works and there's no way around it or are actually some solutions to this? In the last episode, Ryan was just telling us how we here at Business of Architecture have a call called Project Reclaim where if clients have a certain amount of accounts receivable that are late, it is mandatory for them to attend this call so we can train them and coach them on how to reclaim their money. And Ryan, during this process, put together, he thought, you know what, just like any good movie has a musical score, I think we should have a musical score for Project Reclaim. So but before we jump into this, here's I'm going to summarize what we talked about last time. Here's some of the problems that exist in the industry with not getting paid. Number one, you feel like you're making a lot of money, but where is it? It's not in the bank account. Well, it's because it's in someone else's bank account. That leads to problems. Number two, clients treat you like a bank. They may not call you a bank, but mentally that's what's happening. And certainly you're probably not charging interest or getting paid interest for the money that you're loaning them by not getting paid for your work. Number three, resentment can begin to build up. You can start to resent your clients, which then festers like an inner cancer. And problem number four, ultimately this leaks your energy and passion. Instead of being enthusiastic, you start to get disillusioned and burned out with architecture, start to go into victim mode instead of being empowered. Now, Ryan, what is this about Project Reclaim playlist? <laughs> so, so I thought it was we needed to have a kind of empowered um, soundtrack to this that would actually get us a little bit aggressive, get us a little bit kind of just psyched up. You know, it's like the music that you put on to go to the gym. This is the music that you put on before you're going to go and make these, you know, because sometimes these are, these are the difficult phone calls to have. And the world of hip hop has no shortage of fantastic tunes um so i dug in deep we discovered we discovered this uh, i dug in deep and um made a made a playlist which is primarily 
primarily hip hop from the nineties. <laughs> so beautiful. So how, how do our clients use this? So sometimes I will give them a track to listen to and they have to listen to it every morning or they have to listen to it just before they get on the, on a call with one of their clients. Um, sometimes we have them look over the lyrics. The lyrics are explicit in most cases, but you know, they're, 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 they're talking about gangster life. They're talking about people owing them money. And there's a very unrelenting negotiation that happens that I think we can all kind of, um, lean into and take a little bit of this of the spirit i'm not suggesting that we have to be as aggressive as some of the descriptions in the songs um yeah no no drive-by shootings no, exactly we, we don't that. we don't need to do anything like that and and yeah and, for all you who are getting ready to go out there and storm the developer's office we don't need no, to be do that. breaking any fingers or anything like that but yeah i i, I do want to com communicate the seriousness of it and the just not being fucked with Stop it. Yeah. Just stop yeah. it. Just yeah. stop yeah. allowing it to happen. Have these grown up conversations with other grown ups. Stop allowing this just to, to, to piss away. It, I, I can't stress the amount of um, you know, danger that it puts a business into when we haven't got our collections under in in place, right? You know, so, sometimes what happens is that you've got clients, they're working with investors. They don't pay, um, you know, and we don't do anything about it. Now we're being leveraged. Sometimes we've got clients who have a dispute about what it is that's actually owed. Okay, fine, just deal with it. You got to get on. A, you got to get on a call. If it means you've got to go through each in, in, invoice and have a conversation, or you have your bookkeeper do that, then just grow up. You've got to go off and you've got to go and get that done. Right? It's your money. Go and sort it out. And if there's something that's wrong with your communication, like you're doing, um, you know, extra ad services, and the client didn't know what they was uh, what they were signing up for, then you need to get that process tightened up. You need to send out a memo. Hey, conversation that we had today. Um, we reckon it's going to be between ten and thirty hours worth of work. Here's what it's going to cost. Are you still happy for us to go ahead with it? Just put some kind of mechanism for tidying that process up. It makes life so much easier have an expectations meeting we might talk about this a little bit later in the kind of solutions but you know where you're where you're just outlining what you expect from the client in terms of fulfilling on their responsibilities so there is a little bit of there's a little bit of conflict and collision that's in the nature of these conversations it doesn't mean need, need for it to be a massive argument but we can't wuss out and ignore it it doesn't work um, and it certainly doesn't work when architects, um, you know, when they're just late with their invoicing. Okay, if you're just not if you're just not doing invoicing because it's too clunky on your side, that doesn't work either. Um, and you might have had the experience with one of your own consultants who you're asking them, please send me an invoice, please send me an invoice, please send me an invoice. And then ten months down the line, they send you a big invoice for everything, and you're like, yeah, I can't pay all of that right now. You're going to have to wait. Okay, so we've it, the, just the movement of money and making sure that it's flowing is one of the most important priorities we've got in the business. They call it currency because it flows. So we've got to make sure that we're keeping and protecting that flow of, of money. And all of these songs here on Project Reclaim are kind of testament to that flow of cash. And there's a reverence for it. And that's what they're all about. So shall I give us what the songs are? Yeah, listen to the songs, and uh, we'll put a link to this in the show notes. We'll put a link to the playlist for those of you who want to, you know, just just kind of thump every now and then to some uh, some good tunes that inspire you to put on your uh, your battle armor and have these uh, challenging conversations. So the first tune is the is the classic one, and it's the theme of Project Reclaim is "Where's My Money" by Busta Rhymes. So you can't get much more classic than that. Where's my money? Um, money. Then we've got Get Paid by Young, Young Dolph. We've got the 90s classic Got Your Money, Old Dirty Bastard and Kelly's. Um, we've got Bitch Better Have My Money, the Rihanna song. <laughs> we've there, got, you go. there you go. Yep. We've, yep. Got, we've got Payback, <laughs> Koji Radical and Nux. 
We've got Where's My Money by TC and Casper. We've got 50 Cents, I Get Money. We've got Get Paid by Wiley. This is a UK um, drill artist or grime artist here. You've got um, Naz, You Owe Me, and Genuine. We've got The Money Collector, Forever Nova, Pay Your Debt, Pay Up by Rhapsody, Give Me My Cash. Um, there's a ZZ Top song here, I Got To Get Paid. There's another oh, song here just called, called Reclaim by Bakar. Um, Killer Mike, Pay Up. PF... <laughs> <laughs> PFV and Grizzy Hendrix, What I'm Owed. We've got, oh, this is a classic tune. The Payback, James Brown. Um, and then Money Collector. Ooh, from James Brown. Is that the, the classic, James Brown? Yeah, yeah. This is, a, oh, nice. this is that old, old tune that you'll see in lots of gangster, gangster movies. Yeah, um, nice. And then we've got Money Collector, D-Double, and Pay Up. So there you go. You can go and check out that playlist and use it as your your theme songs to get you psyched up to go and have your those inspiration. Conversations. Okay. So we talked about some of the problems. We've identified the impacts of what happens when architectural practices are being stiffed, when they're being shortchanged, when they aren't getting paid. So here's some of the possibility. You're making lots of money and you have your money, which then allows you to invest. Invest. Yep. Invest in the business. Invest in yourself. Take grow some, that money. Take some time off. Ah, go on vacation. Pay bonuses to staff. Hire invest more. In, hire more people. Hire. Yep. Grow hire the more team. people. Advance your hire technology. Hire someone experienced, so you're not depending upon a bunch of low salary workers mm -hmm. to try to do all the work, which then pulls you back in as the bottleneck. I mean, the list could go on and on and on and on. Money gives you agency. Possibly number two. Instead of you being the bank for your clients, clients are your bank, meaning they pay you in advance. So this is a strategy that we teach in smart practice, and which is a movement we're trying to create in the architecture industry, which is like get paid up front. Get paid up front. And this is a strategy that when we present a lot of times to architects, they say, well, that won't work with my clients. I don't understand how that would work, and no one's going to do that. You know, All my competitors do something different. Well, it, it, you know, do you want to be like your competitors? Or do you want to be wealthy mm -hmm. and have your clients respect you and come into the office every month already having the money in the bank for the work that you're going to do that month? So that's what we mean by clients being your bank. Clients are your bank. They pay you in advance. They're funding the growth of your business instead of you funding the growth of theirs. Possibility number three, you're empowered to do your best work. How do these two relate, Ryan, in your experience? Well, when you get paid up front there's a few things that happen there number one just practically you've got more resource available to be able to put onto a project before you start doing it so number one you can practically do your best work because now you've got the resource to be able to put onto it and invest into the project and make sure that the client is is well looked after secondly there's an appreciation and a love that develops when clients pay us it feels great you feel happy. There's a good community. There's, there's just a good vibe, a good energy, and you know the clients paid you money. You've now got you've got you're motivated to do the work as well. When someone pays you to do to do the stuff, then great. There's a there's a leverage there now for you to get started and to do the work and to bring your best self to it, and it's it's there. Um, and I think it just overall just really. Uh, improves the relationship and it kind of keeps the flow of the work happening and everyone that we've seen who's doing it is feels very empowered to do the work and do it to their best of their abilities there isn't this kind of dread or resentment that happens when you've done three months worth of work and now you're still fighting with the client to pay you for it that's when the, you start slowing down you don't want to engage with the project you have to take your resource off it um the client's lack of communication with you means that you know you're starting to fall out of favor with them. They're falling out of favor with you, et cetera, et cetera. And just look at the team spirit that emerges around projects like that. It just becomes much more difficult to be um, performing at a high level. And it becomes the whole... And let's face it, when you're dealing with this, you just turn out to be a miserable human being. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, let me give an example. So Ryan, 
you know that last summer I purchased a uh, that uh, BMW i8, which is a car I'd had my eye on for a long time. Convertible. How, how could I forget? I yeah, how could you forget? We went, we went, uh, we went riding up to the majestic Sequoias, you know, speeding around the corners in that beautiful hot rod. It's a roadster, and um, you know what? One thing that was really interesting for me driving that car around was how many people gave me thumbs up, how many people gave me kudos, how many people you know, kind of did little fist bumps and they were appreciative. They, they said like at the gas station, I'd be gassing up and some guy would come and be like, man, nice car. Wow. That's a oh, great car. Right. And what this, what this did for me is it actually, it, it, it raised my view of humanity. I'm like, okay, wow. Human beings are actually kinder and, and more enthusiastic and more, uh, more compassionate and more supportive than I had previously thought. Now, the opposite is true when we're not getting paid, when we see the worst in people, when we're not getting paid, then we can start to develop this sort of pessimistic view about the world, like, damn, no one wants to pay me. I mean, I, I, everyone's cheating me behind my back. Mm. You know, they don't respect and value what I do. And so we end up walking around with that little devil in the back of our mind telling us that, you know, humanity's doomed, people aren't good, business people are thieves. And then we start to build this false narrative that ultimately impacts every other area of our life. It's quite insidious. It can rob our passion for doing architecture, which is where this resentment starts to build up. Yeah, absolutely. So, absolutely. I, I think it's really interesting when you know when you are getting paid healthily and you're getting paid promptly that you there's an appreciation and a gratitude that emerges from doing that. When we're not getting paid on time and we have to, you know, and then we don't do anything about it, then we become very vulnerable to falling into um, any number of kind of victim mode mentalities that ultimately become very disempowering for us to take any action about it. And then we become blameful and resentful and then it just perpetuates the same cycle. And we're more likely to set up and attract those kinds of clients who are going to take advantage and not pay in the first place. One thing we would ask you is, one thing I've learned over time is, the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. So if you're letting a lot of invoices slide out there, if you're letting collections go uncollected, the question we would have for you today as a listener is where else in your life are you not having or you're avoiding difficult conversations that need to happen? Now let's face it, not all of us, so a lot of us are what we might call conflict avoidant. Right? We don't like conflict. So we avoid it. We avoid the difficult conversations. It's tough. It makes us feel uncomfortable. Mm. Okay. So the, the flip side of this is being a people pleaser. I mean, if I had a dollar for every time I heard an architect tell me that they're a people pleaser, well, we could probably build a chain of dollar bills to the, to the moon. <laughs> but the flip side of like people pleaser is one way to say it. Conflict avoider is another way to say it. Mm -hmm. So we have to be able to separate ourselves and our friendships from the business. Because so many times I hear, I hear people say, well, I don't want to endanger the friendship. We're well, like, hold on a second. I, you don't want to endanger the relationship. They're not paying you. What relationship is there? <laughs> there? There is no relationship. The relationship has already been damaged. This person is not paying you. They've basically said F you to you. And there's no, re what relationship are you trying to protect here? Yeah, it was like the fundamental of the relationship of the business business relationship is you pay me when I've done my service. It's like the go. fundamentals of a of a marriage that it's monogamous. If you've got a wife or a husband yeah. who's just sleeping with anybody that they choose, that's what kind of marriage is that? I don't know. <laughs> Doesn't sound like a fun one. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> even if even if I'm the one sleeping around, it still doesn't sound fun because that means that there's something missing from my, my yeah, own marriage, right? Yeah, exactly. exactly. So, um, yeah, that 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 that's that's what that is what we are here to have a conversation about. I, I, I the, the project reclaim group. I think one of the things that's really wonderful about it is that we've had so many clients who would go through it. We've got one person at the moment who's going through it, and they've never. They've never had these kinds of conversations with their clients before. And each week they've been really worried and nervous and I don't want to have to make these phone calls and I'm just going to let it slide. And each week they get held accountable. What did you do? And then eventually they're like, I can't keep coming to these classrooms and have nothing to report. And then we practice 
um, you know, how they're going to have this conversation. What does it look like? What are they going to say? What are they going to say if the, if, the, if the developer says this? And then they get on the phone and they start having these conversations and they come back the next week and they're like, wow, I felt so empowered doing that. I feel like a million bucks. I feel powerful. Just standing my ground, standing in my power, I was ready for the client and the client said, I'm sorry, I got, we, we're going to get you money and here's the date we're going we're gonna to do it. And it wasn't like this massive argument or a conflict or anything like that. It was just holding your ground, holding your power and having somebody else go, sorry, we're out of integrity with you. Apologize, we're going to sort this out. It's not going to happen again. Just power power yeah the the worst case scenario rarely happens i mean the fact no one's going to raise their voice at you you know the people they're they're going to understand they're going to feel if they're if they're halfway human they'll feel some tinge of guilt mm -hmm. i mean every but everyone would a developer probably i mean developers we know they're they're just above lawyers on the evolutionary food chain but i mean even they probably have some compassion in their hearts you know so the possibility here is you feel energized and passionate because you're valued because you're standing for your value and because you're realizing that having these conversations isn't as hard as you think. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, that you're actually devaluing yourself when you're not collecting and standing for your value. You're basically saying, hey, look, I agree with you. I'm not that valuable and I should just yeah. go away and I, go I, do my work. I love this. You see, not to, you put, hit the nail on the head there. You're standing for your value, right? Even if it's for like $200, $50, $10, right? You're standing for your value, right? You're making a stand. You're, you're kind of, you know, you're deeply programming something powerful into your mind every time you do this. And it's communicating and broadcasting something to the universe as well. And, and I do believe like you, you start having these conversations, you start practicing them, you start holding people accountable to them, holding your clients accountable. You start attracting higher caliber clients to you. Now, it's, it's interesting because obviously sometimes we have to deal with late payments with our own clients. It's very rare, I must say. It's very rare, and we've got a lot of good systems in, in place, and our clients are normally very, um, you know, they'll, they'll get in communication, but every so often it will happen. Someone pays us late, and Jackie's normally our first port of call, and if it escalates beyond that, then either myself or, or Enoch will, will get involved. And a few weeks ago, just before Christmas, we had somebody who was um, – delinquent or had gone delinquent and we had to do a, an intervention and I had to do it publicly in in a classroom with 20 other people and hold that person accountable and work through an agreement right then and there with everybody else but it wasn't a you know it wasn't like a massive argument or a clit or like a what's the word um confrontational you it were was, holding them to account. You were just holding them to account to something they said that they would do. Exactly. That's that's yeah, it. There's nothing, and nothing they, shameful. Nothing. No guilt. No. No blaming. Just hey, here's. And I had to, you know, here's yeah. what you said you would do. Exactly. And I had to check in with them. Is everything okay? Is there any reasons why this has happened? Is there anything that we need to talk about? No. Got it. Okay. Then when can we expect to get the money in our bank account? They were like, okay, end of the week. End of the week. What does that mean? Friday. Yeah, Friday. Okay, what time would we be expecting to look at that? 3 p.m. Friday. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. We've mm -hmm. got that. It's recorded. Mm -hmm. Everyone's seen it. Any reason that you can foresee between now and Friday, 3 p.m., that might get in the way from you being able to, to pay that? No, no, no. That's it. It will be absolutely fine. Are you sure? Nothing at all? No, no, no. Definitely it can be there. Supposing it did happen, what are we going to do? How am I, what do I expect the communication to come from you? I'll get in contact with you. Do. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll get in contact with you. It won't happen. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, great. Beautiful. And then, well, that, and that is a great place to cut the episode because I got a jam. I got to run, Ryan. And here's the other thing about this conversation is it's about actually being able to handle the objections that your clients will give you when you try to collect because you know you've probably heard a lot of these. The checks in the mail. Oh, we're waiting on payment from the project. Um, we, you know, our financing got shut down. There's like a million and one reasons why they'll try to convince you that you don't deserve to be paid. This is where smart practice helps you out. This is where it's important to have responses, important to be able to handle the so-called objections that people have so you can get paid what you're worth and that all architects everywhere can start to stand for the value that they have as architects. 
Awesome. Go get your money. And that's a wrap. Oh yeah, one more thing. If you haven't already, head on over to iTunes and leave a review. We'd love to read your name out here on the show. Hey, a quick note. This is Enoch here, and I have a question for you. Do you know someone who's highly professional, loves speaking with people, and is skilled in the area of professional selling? Well, if so, I'm looking for a director of enrollment to join our team here at Business of Architecture. This is a sales position. And if you or someone you know wants to impact an industry and earn an excellent income doing so, head on over to businessofarchitecture.com for more information. Have you ever had trouble finding an architectural photographer who could really make your project shine? Today's episode is sponsored by renowned architectural photographer Tobin Davies. Tobin Davies eliminates the hassle by traveling to your location to create the stunning photographs your project deserves, and we are happy to support him here on the Business of Architecture podcast. Visit TobinDavies.com or BayawayPhotos.com to book a shoot in less than 10 minutes and ask about the special offer for Business of Architecture podcast listeners. Again, that's TobinDavies.com or BayawayPhotos.com. The views expressed on the show by my guests do not represent those of the host, and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract, bond, or commitment, except to help you conquer the world. Carpe diem.